What's up guys? Welcome to another subscriber text game breakdown. Now, if you didn't see the first one, it's basically where me and Ray go over here, go through the screenshots that you guys sent me and try to figure out what exactly went wrong and what could have made the text game better. This one though is going to be more advanced because the person doing the messaging in this interaction is already pretty solid. So we're going to analyze what could have taken the text game here from good to great. So without further ado, let's crack into the screenshots. So this is Hinge, and if you're not familiar with Hinge, basically you get to pick three questions and you answer them. And you know, usually if you say something witty or funny, a girl will like one of your answers, and this kind of acts as like their matching system. Hot, awesome app, I, overall I recommend it, so if you're not on it, I recommend you check it out. And then so she liked one of his answers, and then he opens her with, is that my cue to invite you on a spontaneous wine sipping date? This opener is okay. Um, Personally, I would have said, is that my cue to, to bust out the bottle of wine? Still gets the same exact point across, but it sounds a little bit more ballsy, a little bit more like alpha, a little bit more just badass. So again, like sometimes these small variations can make a you know, drastic difference in like the tone of the text. And she says, what if I'm a 150 kilogram dude? So what she's referring to is in his bio, uh, or sorry, in his, one of his questions, it asks like, what is your ideal date? And he says, you don't turn out to be a 300 pound black dude and we split a bottle of wine. So you got that from the mastermind group. And so he responds with, are you? Now this is a, this is a pretty good text back. Um, it just like, it's short, simple, and it's just like provocatively, playfully challenging her. And she said, nope. Um, so then he says, good, would have been a waste of our love. That's okay. I personally would have said, good, that would have made our love a little bit harder. It, Again, we're getting a little bit into semantics, but it just sounds a little bit smoother, uh, you know, a little bit more amusing. And she says, hey, but 150 kilograms is a whole lot of love. Um, so he responds with, I like my girl small and petite. Now this is a good text, I like this one, because he's basically stating what he likes. Anytime you're being the one like, hey, I like this, I like that, I enjoy this, in a way that then gets the girl to qualify, that's good. What you don't want is the opposite of that, when you're being like, oh, what do you like? What are you into? Like." Doing that a little bit to kind of just get to know the girl is fine, but when you're doing it too much, you're being the one that's trying to like qualify to her, that's just a bad frame to be in. So she says, haha, I don't know if I'm considered petite, but I'm 5'4". I think I'm like average sized. And he says, ah, so very fun sized with a winky face. Now, this is also another good text. I like this. It's just like fun and flirty, which I like. And then she says, ha ha ha, fun sized. This trick is like a parrot, she's just repeating what he says. And he says, yes, I know exactly what to do with a fun size. This is, this is not a bad text. He's sexualizing, but he's doing a smooth, progressive way, which I always talk about. You know, you don't want to be like, uh, ha, she says, haha, fun size. Be like, yeah, perfect size for me. Toss you around and fuck the shit out of you. And it's just like too much, too fast. So he's kind of, uh, kind of building up to it. And then she says, do tell. So he says, it involves picking you up and throwing you around. It's better than if he just said out, right? I still think it's a little bit too much too fast. It's not that it's bad. Like if a girl's ETF, it's going to work. But you got, we're, right now, we're not talking about like going from bad to good. We're talking about going from good to great. So I might have said, um, do tell. I might have said, I don't know, it's a little bit R-rated. Like kind of bait her a little bit more. And then she would have been like, she would have been like, oh no, like what is it? Tell me. And I'd be like, well, let's just say it involves me picking you up wrapping your legs around me and, and then dot, 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 right? So kind of just build up to it a little more, but it's fun. Uh, she says, haha, sounds like fun. I do bruise easily though. So this is working pretty well. And she says, that just triggered some bad thoughts in my mind. Bad thoughts. It's okay, it's not a bad text. Um, again, he's slowly building up to the sex scene, which, which I like. Um, I would have, I would have, I would have just said maybe stop, comma, you're turning me on. Like that, I might have said something like that, even shorter, and still gets the same point across. But his text was fine. She said, "What? What kind of bad thoughts?" And he says, "It's a bit explicit. Maybe I shouldn't say." That's okay. So he, what he's doing is kind of what I talked about earlier. He's baiting her a little bit. Um, I might have said, "You don't even want to know with a devil face." It just get yeah, same exact point across, but just sounds a bit smoother. But his text is fine here. And she says, "Ha ha ha! Is it sexual?" Oh, geez, what gave it away? And he says, "A little." Um, that's okay. Um, I would have said maybe dot dot dot. Uh, again, same exact point across. Just sounds a little bit smoother. And she says, go on, smiley face. And then he sends her a long sex. Rhaegar, we're gonna have to put earmuffs on you for this. This gets, this gets a little raunchy. So the sex that he sends is, it starts like this. I pick you up, put your face first onto my bed, slide your jeans off, sensual relaxing massage. 
you'll feel my fingertips running around your neck, your ears down your back, brushing up slowly against your inner thighs, closer and closer to your pussy till you're wet through your panties. I'll start working my lips around your legs before teasing your clit with my tongue. Now, the sexting here is okay. It's not great, but it's not, it's not bad either. A lot of guys, when they sex, you know, they just write too crass. They're like, yeah, put my big dick inside of you. Like, eh, that's not gonna turn most girls on. So this is okay. It's kind of descriptive. What I don't like about it is he risks falling into like a, the sexting monkey frame. It's not as bad as being a dancing monkey, but you don't want to be just your sexting monkey. Like the guy that she just turns to when she wants to just like masturbate and have you write some sexy words so she can either, you know, get off or get validation. So uh, nowadays, honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, I almost rarely ever sex. And when I do, it's a lot more just suggestive. I imply instead of just saying, I like to nowadays, I. I went back from, you know, being very explicit to now pulling back a little bit where I like to leave a lot more mystery. I just find that it works better and then it gives the girl plausible deniability. So then if the next day she starts feeling abashed and she's like, oh my God, this guy's gonna expect me to fuck. I can be like, no, when did I say that? So I just like to leave myself a little plausible deniability. But yeah, this is totally fine. This is kind of what I used to do about a year or two ago. Um, the issue that I don't like is that I feel it gives away too much, right? So she's just saying go on and he's just barking to her tune. What I would have said is say please, right? I would have gotten her to be like, please, please tell me. Like once you get that, then I would give her maybe half of this, like half literally, even if a third of this message. And then I would want her to say like, go on or tell me more. Now she responds, her response is, mm, that'd be nice, which is a good response. But a response that I would want, an ideal response would be like, holy shit, tell me more. Like that's the kind of response that I really would want. And you know, where she just like, she can't put the phone down. Uh, she's just saying, mm, that'd be nice. So then he keeps going. She says, I'll then flip you over on your back and move your wet panties to the side. I'll tease around your clit, suck on it. Your breathing gets heavier, slide my tongue in you, then back up your clit, licking you faster and faster in your orgasm, your body is quivering at this point. So again, I just feel like, um, I feel like he's falling a little bit into the sexy monkey frame. Instead of this whole second sex, I would have literally just said, if you're into that sort of thing, and then get her to be the one that starts sexting. Like, I just think that getting investment from the girl is just extremely huge. It's just like, it, it's just like so important. And then like, if you can just get investment from her by saying things like doing slight takeaways, like if you're into that sort of thing and stuff like that, then you know, then you're on the right track. She says, I'm like so sensitive down there. Are you trying to turn me on at 2 a.m., ha ha? And then he responds with, even easier for me to give you 10 to 15 screaming oral orgasms. It's okay. Uh, again, I just, I, I'm, my, my concern here is the sexting monkey frame. Uh, this, this sex is not bad though because it's tongue in cheek. It's like sexual, but it's also a little bit humorous. Like I usually like to personally combine like sexuality with some humor to kind of balance it out and take away from any, you know, creepiness that a girl might have when she reads a, you know, slightly provocative text. Uh, I might've really responded to that text maybe and then is it working question mark or something like that. Again, my goal here is to get her to be like, oh yeah, I'm getting so horny right now to get her to invest. And she says, haha, what do you like? What turns you on? So it's a pretty good message to get back. He says, hard and passionate sex, hair pulling, choking, spanking, how about you? Uh, this is okay. He taught, he basically listed things that pretty much every girl is going to be into, which is good. This is what I always talk about when a girl asks you, what are you into? You want to say something that sounds good, but something that's not going to turn her away. You don't want to be like, uh, you know, like fucking taking a dump on your chest and you know, fucking having my dog watch while we blah, blah, blah. Like something that's like super extreme and it's going to like scare her away. So you want to say something that, you know, 99% of girls are going to be down with. Uh, what I would have done is I would have made this sound a little bit better. I would have said rough, and sensual sex, uh, a little bit of hair pulling, choking, spanking, and going down until I give you 10 to 15, and going down with my lips until, and using my lips until I give you 10 to 15 screaming orgasm or something like that. So it would have been a longer message. It just would have, it just would have sounded better. And I think it would have, you know, just, you know, you add an extra sentence, but you know, you turned her on a lot more. So she says, I like that too. Choking is hot as long as I'm not dying. I like being on top and writing. So, so far, all the messages that he sent back were either average or good. There hasn't been any bad text sent by him. This is the first one. He says, I'm sure you're not as great of a writer as I'd expect. So I see what he's trying to do here. He's trying to do a takeaway, like a little bit of a neg, but 
It just, it just, first of all, this doesn't sound, it doesn't really make that much sense. I know what he's getting at, but to a girl, this is not gonna make much sense. And it's just like, just sounds awkward. Like she's, they're sexting, she's telling him what she likes. Like you wanna reward that behavior. You don't wanna punish that. Like you wanna use ta takeaways to punish behavior that you don't want. What you don't wanna do is try to punish good behavior. Like that would be like me teaching my dog, like giving him a treat every time he shits inside the house. It just wouldn't make sense. So uh, she says, what? So she gives him like a little bit of a negative answer. I think she legitimately didn't understand what he was getting at. And he responds with what question mark. So again, this is, this is also pretty bad text because if I did send that text, which I probably never would, maybe like five years ago or something like that, um, back when I was getting into text game, then I would have followed it up when she said what, I would have kind of dropped it. Like sometimes you just gotta almost lose the battle, admit you lost the battle so that you can win the war, right? Sounds pretty cliche, but you know, it's pretty true. Like, I would have just changed course here. I've been like, just kidding. Uh, I bet you'd look sexy on top or something like, just kidding, you wouldn't look sexy on top or something like that, that just kind of baits her. So I would have done that. Um, but you know, he just says, what question mark? And the conversation stalls out and she doesn't respond. So then he double texts her two days later. This part is good because you know, you don't want to be double texting right away. So he waited two days, which is good. And he says, I just had a brilliant idea. That says reopener. Uh, it's okay, it's not bad. Um, she says, hmm, question mark. He says, we should get together sometime soon. Uh, this text is yeah, slightly below average. I, the reason I don't like it, I, I use this clothes all the time. The reason I don't like it here is just because, you know, he should have used this like a screenshot or two screenshots ago when the interaction was on a high note. Now it's kind of like on a low note and starting up again. Like I always like to close on like a high note. So. I probably would have built up, got the interaction going, literally one or two more messages, then once it's kind of like at its peak again, then use the same exact message. She says, hmm, yeah. So she agrees to the meetup, but ideally you don't want her to say, hmm, yeah. You want to say, fuck yeah, or can't wait, or when, like tell me more, or like yes daddy, whatever. You want to text like that, that just shows enthusiasm. And again, I've, Close girls who gave me also a lukewarm answer. You know, sometimes you can't get, sometimes you have to get like a lukewarm answer because you're not gonna get a fucky out of the girl. She's just like, you know, she's just too bombarded with dudes or something like that. So it's not that like you always need that, but that's what you want. And I think that he could have gotten out of her if he just closed a little bit better, like a few screenshots ago, or you know, if that whole whatever, uh, you're not as good as you look on top of that whole episode happened, then he built it up, you know, maybe a few more texts, and so it just would have been better. So here are his next text after that is, do you like wine? I do like this text uh, because he's basically kind of solidifying the date. He's like just getting more investment from her, which I always am a fan of. And she says, yes. And he says, good, how do you feel about splitting a bottle of wine with me on my romantic balcony? Uh, Again, he's using a lot of my lines here, but the reason I don't like this combination is because he's trying to do two things in one message. He's trying to soft close, but he's also trying to invite her straight over. Now, the reason you don't want to do that is because the girl could be totally down with hanging out with you, but she doesn't want to come straight to your place. Maybe she had a bad experience going straight to a guy's house. So she's super down to meet up, super DTF, doesn't want to come straight over. So you give her like a, do you want to do this and this? and she objects to one thing, but as a result, you get an overall no. Like, and then you have to go back and try to figure out what thing was she objecting to. Was she objecting to the meetup or coming straight over? So that's why I like to always you know, do one thing at a time. Like, hey, we should get together sometime soon. Cool, are you free Thursday night? Cool, uh, 8 p.m., cool. Let's meet uh, at my place and go from there, cool. Like, I like to always break it up and just like get investment along each step. Just a much smoother and better way of doing it. So she says, that sounds like a great idea to me. Again, good, good, got, got a good response. And he says, perfect, shoot me your number and we'll set it up. I thought I just said, perfect, shoot me your number. Uh, if I was gonna go for the number close here, but I probably wouldn't. And the reason I wouldn't just yet is because he's on a good track. She just agreed to meet up with him and come straight over. Literally right here is when he should have gone into, you know, lock down a date and time. He should have said, what's your schedule like? Or you free Thursday or Saturday night. Like literally it would have taken one more text. He could have locked down exact date and time, then moved over to text and then just use texting just to confirm the date. So he could have just saved by putting in a little bit more work here. He could have saved himself work down the line. Um, so she gives him the number. He texts her, hey, it's blank from the thing. She sends, hey, hey, smiley face. He says, love the enthusiasm. 
So yeah, this is another one of my lines. You was slightly out of context. And the reason it's out of context is because I use this when the girl is literally giving me like no, no investment, no enthusiasm. She gives him two haze and a smiley face. Like, what does he really expect, you know? It's, it's again, it's just kind of like punishing good behavior, which you never want to do. So she says, ha, 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 morning. And then he says, afternoon, you free tonight or Thursday evening. Now, this text I don't like here. Now, this is... Just to be clear, this is how I like to close. I like to give girls two days, you know, or three options or something like that. He's using the option close. The reason it's not good is because he let some time pass between the time where she agreed to meet up with him. And now he's almost, that almost makes you have to redo the soft close again. But he's skipping the, you know, the second soft close and just going for a hard close. Now, the reason you kind of have to do it is because in a girl's mind, the time passes and she almost forgets that she agreed to meet up with you, right? It's just human nature, especially, you know, if it's a hot girl. So then you kind of have to soft close again and then hard close. So literally, I would have said uh, here, I would have just said, um, How's your day going? And then she would have said, good, uh, you know, how about you? And I would have said, good, just finished a big workout, looking nice and fit for our date. And then she, that would have beat her into probably saying, oh, when is that? And I would have said, you free uh, tonight or Thursday evening. Literally, that's all it would have taken. Uh, so just two more texts and you could have like closed a lot more smoothly. And she says, hmm, maybe not tonight. So again, you're gonna get messages like that when you skip steps, you know, a girl, she wants to meet up with you, but she's just like, you're just, She's just like, ah, oh, shit, I don't know. It's like too, a little bit too much too fast. Like she's like, ah, oh, shit, I don't know. Yeah, I want to meet up with you, but I'm not really too sure. You know, and you can kind of like minimize the chance of this happening again by following the proper steps. So he says, does Thursday 7 p.m. work? Um, he's, he's trying to lock down a time when she hasn't even really agreed to meet up uh, on that date. And it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a iffy strategy. I would have said, hmm, when she said, hmm, maybe not tonight, I've been, I would just literally say, what night works better? Right, she probably just legitimately couldn't do that night. So then she would have picked a date and then locked it down. And then I'd be like, how does 7 p.m. sound? So again, skipping steps when it comes to closing, it's a mistake I see quite often because guys get really excited. They're at the finish line and then they fumble, right? So she says, sorry, not tonight, but soon though, been horny lately. All right, so this is, even though she can't meet up that night, she's saying soon, and she's saying been horny lately. Now the mistake he makes is that he doesn't respond to that. He waits three days and reopens her with a Ryan Gosling meme. Now this is not a thread that you would wanna, you know, like change. This is a good thread. Like you wanna build on that. She has been horny lately. I would've literally just said how horny with the devil face and then got a little bit into sexting, rebuild it up again, soft close and hard close. So again, this is not a thread where you wanna change gears, right? And especially because three days pass. So when she says been horny lately on Thursday, on Sunday, she could be horny, she could be not horny, she could be asexual, whatever, it's just too much time. So he reopens her with the Ryan Gosling meme and she says, hey, hey, he says, been staying out of trouble. It's okay, it's been you know, like banter, she says, hmm, maybe. And he says, are you always this definitive with your answers? It's okay, uh, it's okay. She says, haha, not always, was out last night. Uh, he says, damn, party animal, what's your schedule like this week? Again, the issue here is he's skipping the soft close and going straight for the hard close. She, um, I would, have, I would have just literally said, uh, don't party too hard or you'll wear yourself out for me or so you don't wear yourself out for our date or something like that. Like kind of soft close it and just kind of hint at it. And then she'd be like, oh, when's the date? So she says, went for a drive and a bit of fun in the car. Pretty busy. I think she's just saying she fucked in the car. She says, pretty busy this week. When are you free? And he says, nice, quite busy too, but I'm sure we can both spare a couple hours for a love. And he says, tomorrow, Friday night. This is another bad text. Now, the reason this text is bad is because she's literally saying, when are you free? And he's using, he's responding with a takeaway. Now, the takeaway that he's using is effective. But when you use it in a situation where you're asking the girl out, she's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then you're like, I'm busy too. She says, I don't know, I'm busy. And you say, I'm busy too, but I'm sure we can both find a little, a few hours for a love, right? It's effective there. Now, you don't want to use it when a girl, again, is giving you a positive response and then punish, you know, punish good behavior by saying, oh, yeah, we can both find our little hours for our love. Like, why say that? She says, when are you free? The right call here would have been to say uh, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, whatever, just pick three nights. How about you? And then she would either pick one of those nights or another night. Literally, that's all he had to do here. And, you know, I think this would have been solid that he would have closed her or gotten the date at least. And she doesn't respond. And I think part of that is just because she's confused by his message here. It's like she's, 
And, you know, it's like, she's like, hey, yeah, when can we hang out? And he's like, I don't know. She's like, oh, well, fuck you anyway. Like, it, it just, it's just kind of confusing. And again, girls have so many options nowadays. So you want to just keep everything as optimal as possible. Like, you don't want to throw them curveballs and stuff like that. Because then she's like, uh, fuck this guy. She can't think of a response. And then she just chats up another guy that she's been, you who's trying to hit her up. So again, suboptimal text. And then he has to re-engage her. So he waits a few days and he says, and the word for best texture goes to dot, dot, dot. Now this is a pretty good re-engagement text. So this is fine. She says, oh wow, haha, I'm horrible at replying. Sorry, how have you been? He says, good, getting into festive spirit. How about you? It's not a bad text. I think it was right around the holidays. So that's fine. She says, haha, just enjoying some time relaxing. Just went for a swim. He says, at the beach. She says, not nah, pool. I would have probably said, when she said just went for a swim, I would have said, uh, I would have said, oh, swimming, swimming your way to our date or something like that. That's not the best text, but just something that like is a little bit more fun and flirty. He's, I think this, this text is a little too logical at the beach, question mark, but it's fun. There's nothing wrong with being logical sometimes, but as long as you balance it out with like fun, humor, and flirty. And he says, ah, oh, getting nice and toned for our date. I see, this is a good text, I like this. So he's basically using what I suggested a text a book ago and rephrasing it. And she says, haha, when is it happening? So this is the second time, if you notice, second time she's the one that's pushing for the date and asking him out. This is good. He says, well, which evenings are you free? That's fine. I might have been a little bit more definitive. I might have said, um, when is it happening? Soon, uh, da, da. I would have said soon, da, da, da. What's your schedule like? I just, I might have just thrown that soon in there. I just think, again, sounds a little bit, a little bit better. But yeah, and this is like, we're getting into some semantics here. She says, hmm, 27th. So if it's around the holidays, I'm assuming that's the few days later. I would have probably teased her a little bit. I would have said, so specific. All right, let's do it. Something like that. But he says, all right, Friday should work. How are you celebrating Christmas? Uh, I don't like this as much. And the reason is he's trying to do two things in one thread, right? In one, even though it's two different messages, it's still, they're kind of grouped together. I would have literally just said, all right, Friday works. See you then. Something like that. And then she would respond to that saying, sounds good. And then she might say what time or where are we meeting? Or she might be the one to ask him. What you don't want to do is try to do two things at once because you'll get something like what happens here. And she says, I'll be heading back down to Melbourne tomorrow morning. Now, the reason this is not good is because she didn't actually confirm when he says Friday should work. And she gave him a week, you know, a week date and time when she says, hmm, 27th. It's not like, oh, I'll be free 27th, let's do that. She says, hmm, 27th. It's not the most solid, so you definitely want to get that second confirmation on that, but you know, your chance of getting it are much lower when you change the subject before the girl can confirm. And she says, I'll be heading back down to Melbourne tomorrow morning. He says, lit, enjoy your trip. I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the Aussie slang, but it's fine. And she says, thanks, what about you? He says, Drinks, drinking, drink wine over some Jolly Xmas tunes, of course. That's fine, I like it, it's a little tongue in cheek, it's funny. She says, yes, do you usually do much for Christmas? He says, dinner with friends, used to put up Xmas tree back home. Feel like most Asian families don't properly celebrate uh, Christmas enough. That's fine, uh, it's a little bit too logical for my ta taste. I would have said, no nope, comma, uh, or I would have said, yes, I, I put on my Santa's cute, Santa's outfit and give presents to all the good girls. Uh, here, um, but maybe you're, or like, are you on the naughty, are you on the good or naughty list? Something like that. Again, it's like, still gets the same point across that they're bantering, but it's a little bit more fun and flirty. Like, I just, I feel like keeping things too logical, you know, it's just going to backfire. It's, it's just not going to lead to anything good. She says, haha, true. What is your background? She says, I'm Chinese. You? She says, I'm half Japanese, half Taiwanese. To be honest, it does sound like a very sexy combination. And she says, were you born here? Says, mm, sexy mix, my man. And says, yep. Says, oh, nice. Ha ha, oh, nice. What are you doing today? So again, the past two screeches have been quite logical. Now he says, off to a beach party soon. How about you? It's okay. Again, I probably would have set up something a little bit more like fun and flirty here. Uh, I would have said, uh, meeting my favorite half Japanese, half, ta half Taiwanese girl for a drink or something like that. And she'll be like, haha, I can't today. I'll be like, I know, I'm just kidding. I'll see you on the 27th or whatever. But she, again, so she doesn't respond to that. And he says, he reopens her with your sexy. She doesn't respond. He says, it's cool. I'm sure we'll hang out eventually, sending a skeleton meme. So I wanna be clear though, his last text, whatever the, I mean the last text that she responded to, off to a beach party soon, how about you? It wasn't bad. Like this wasn't the text, it wasn't like she saw that text and she was like, ah, whatever, this guy struck out. That text was okay. 
What it was, it was, it was probably a combination of the fact that one, she's a hot girl who has a lot of options and she just wound up meeting up with another dude, unfortunately. Two, she lost interest. Maybe she just like, ah, fuck online dating. Maybe she had a bad experience or she just got tired of it or whatever. She just like <laughs> stopped being horny. Maybe she just masturbated to some, I don't know, internet porn and just like stopped being horny. So just any number of things, but basically they all come down to her losing interest. So what you wanna do is you wanna make your text game as smooth as possible and as optimal as possible so that you can close the girl as fast as possible to reduce the chance of her losing interest, which is kind of what happened here. So what are the takeaways here? What could have taken this text game from pretty good to great and ultimately increases odds of getting the meetup? Now you're never guaranteed a meetup even if your text game is fucking flawless you know the odds are still not in your favor just because the girl has so many options and because it's you know tinder bumble like she doesn't know you she doesn't owe you anything but like a good poker player if you stack the odds in your favor eventually you come out on top vast majority of the time so i identify three areas where i feel like you know his text game was lacking the first area was he missed out on numerous opportunities to get investment from her. There was numerous chances, like during the sexting, if he's, instead of sending her like a long sex, uh, after the first one, he could have said, if you're into that sort of thing. And then she would have probably would have replied with stuff that she's into, and he could have just built on that, and again, just get more and more investment from her. Because the more investment you get, the more girl is into the conversation, the less your chances are of getting ghosted or flaked on. The second area where I feel like he missed out is when he punished good behavior. I saw him do that numerous times as well. This would be like, my dog takes a shit inside the apartment, I give him a treat. He takes a shit outside, I scold him. Like, that's not gonna lead to anything good. It's gonna lead to my house being full of shit, which I'm hoping you don't want. And the third area where I saw him miss up is on the closing. I just saw him skip steps. So he skipped the soft close several times. He was just a little bit too rushed in the close a lot of the time. And you know, again, these may sound like small steps, like they're not necessary, but they actually can make a big difference. You wanna, you wanna just like, you will put in all this work, you know, you open the girl, you get to know her, you match her, whatever, and she's down to meet up. Like you don't wanna just lose the meet up just because you skip a step. So soft close, hard close, and then, you know, solidify date and time, and then, you know, just go from there, and then you're just confirming the date. So again, I saw him skip steps, you know, numerous times in the interaction, and maybe if he had been a little bit more smooth in his closing, that one thing could have led, you know, the whole thing from stalling out to him actually getting the meetup. Hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and also make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications. It really does help and allows me to focus more energy on growing this channel. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you check out our forums at forums.playingfire.com and check out the free Tinder ebook that we just came up with if you're looking to improve your own text game. We're gonna put all the info in the description below. Thank you for watching and until next time.